Welcome back. The Max Defender A team is tracking Tropical Storm Ian and its possible impact on the Bay Area. To talk more about the current status of the storm, we have Michael Brennan with us. Michael is the acting deputy director at the National Hurricane Center in Miami. How you doing today, Michael? Thanks for joining us. Hey, good morning, Eric. Great to be here with you. Now, we've seen Ian's track move west over the past 24 hours. Can you tell us some of the reasons why Ian's track has shifted and if you expect the track to continue westward over the coming days? Well, yeah, there have been some short-term changes in Ian's motion over during the day yesterday where the system sort of moved a little farther south, moved a little faster toward the west. But overall, there was a westward shift in sort of the envelope of the, the model solutions that we look at for forecasting track. But there's still a lot of uncertainty, especially in the track beyond Cuba, once we get into the eastern Gulf of Mexico later this week. So the main message is don't really pay much attention to those center points or these dots on the forecast. Just think about the cone as a, the, the center could really be anywhere in that cone as we get into the sort of Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday time frame. So that still puts the, most of the west coast of Florida at risk from seeing direct impacts from Ian, as well as all the way up into the Florida panhandle with the Tampa Bay region sort of squarely in, in there as well. Yeah, and speaking of direct impacts, you know, when people see the track offshore, some of them breathe a sigh of relief. They think, oh, maybe we're out of the woods. Now, obviously, a more westerly track is a better outcome, but can you tell us some of the impacts of a major hurricane 50 or even 100 miles offshore of the Bay Area? Yeah, sure. I mean, even with the track now, this is the probability of seeing sustained tropical storm force winds. And at a place like Tampa, it's about 65 percent. And also, there's a risk of, you know, hurricane force winds as well. But, you know, the big concern in the Tampa Bay region is really storm surge. So a track that's moving, uh, you know, even offshore, if, if the storm is expected to grow in intensity and in size, it's going to push a lot of water northward on the east side of the circulation and that could go right into the Tampa Bay area. So even an offshore track uh, for a, a large powerful hurricane is, is bad news for a storm surge in Tampa Bay. That's right. Now what can people do right now to prepare for the storm? I know it's kind of late but uh, the storm's still several days away. Right, yeah, if you look at the timing here, the most likely time of arrival of tropical storm force winds in the Tampa Bay region is Wednesday morning. So you still have you know, all day today, Sunday, Monday, and even into Tuesday to make sure you have your hurricane supplies. You know, if you need any extra food, water, make sure you have your medicine. No, if you live in a hurricane evacuation zone, make that plan for how you're going to evacuate if you're asked to do so by local officials. Know where you're going to go. Are you going to go stay with friends and family? Are you going to go stay at a shelter? Uh, try to travel tens of miles, not hundreds of miles if you're asked to evacuate. And, uh, and, you know, check on any friends or relatives you might have that might need help getting ready for a storm. And I know we have a lot of new people that have moved to Florida over the last few years. If they're not familiar with hurricanes, if you have a new neighbor or friend, you know, tell them how to get ready for a storm and, uh, and really sort of, uh, you know, share that and support everyone as a community. Yeah, all good information, Michael. Thanks again for joining us this morning. And I will have the latest track uh, coming up in just a few minutes, as well as our rain chances for the rest of your Sunday.